Well hi folks, July the 8th, so it's another fortnightly quick plot tour, starting off with my greenhouse again, can't believe it's two weeks already and everything's growing absolutely wonderfully now, it's been so hot so the tomatoes are loving it might be a bit bright, getting some cracking uh, cracking trusses of shirleys on started taking the leaves off down below now get a bit more lighting and a bit more air like I say, more trusses of shirleys Get down to burn again. Some good trusses. Cherry tomatoes is the gardener's delight. Some nice long trusses of cherry ones. So they should be ripening up quick, pretty quickly, I'd have thought. Oh, what else have we got? More cherries all over the place. These are my beef steak ones. Get some big, cracking ones of those. But they get tons bigger than that as well. They're all over the start of the floor and they're just everywhere those. So happy with my tomatoes. I'll just show you me. This is the first time I've grown these, if I can find any. Big what big plant this. Bush plant. These are the sort of plum tomatoes. They don't think they're very big. Well they're like a cross between a cherry and a normal size one, but uh, there's plenty of those. They're all hanging down everywhere. So they're doing brilliantly. Chilies. Like I say, it's so crowded in here you can't see anything. That's that basket of fire, look. Covered in chilies already. They're just loving the heat and growing really well. Peppers. Starting to swell now. I'm having a job seeing it's that sunny. They're only little, but they'll, they'll, they'll get bigger. The only thing that's suffering now are the cucumbers, look. It's just too hot for them and too dry because they like it humid. Still sending out a few little cucumbers, if I can show you that one there. But uh, they do seem to like the humidity rather than the extreme heat and dryness. So that's one thing that has suffered, but it doesn't matter. I've got plenty of my polytunnel still growing. So that's about it, I think. We'll just have a quick uh, nip up to the plot and I'll show you what's going on up there. Well, hi folks, here we are again up at the plot. Two weeks later, after the last update, this is my pumpkin patch for this year. There's a big one up there, but this is the first one. I'll just give you an idea of how big it is, hopefully. You see the size of the leaves. And that must that's grown a heck of a lot in the last two weeks. Oh, just dropped my phone. Right, and I think I've just found the first little embryonic pumpkin there. That's what you're looking for. The big one's not got any on yet, but that has, so hopefully when that flower opens, it'll be open at the same time as a male flower and I can pollinate it then. It's in quite a good position because I'm going to train that back up there, so if I get a pumpkin set there, it uh, should be in a good spot. So hopefully, get some timings right and there's a, there's a male one open at the same time as the flower opens on the pumpkin flower, I can get them pollinated. I can pollinate it with either, I can pollinate it with this one which I could do actually because it's, it's a different variety and it's an actual, it's a bigger one, a bigger, come off a bigger pumpkin. You thought, you think that leaf was big? Look at the size of that one. <laughs> but that's not got any pumpkins on yet, so still plenty of time for it to grow, but it isn't half shifting on. Right, I'll walk over it and try not to stand on it. That's another marrow. One of, me, one of last year's marrow seeds that I've uh, planted out. See what, we, see what we can get off that one. Right, that's that bit. I'm just letting stuff roam about in here. I'll go over into the other patch where I've got my other marrows. I put this up, this up for a bit of a windbreak because it was a bit windy the other, the other day and it just helps them. Anyway, as you can see, look at the size of that. That's me, my other marrow plant. Look, that one and one at the other end and that's must be, what, 15 foot long now. And I think this has got a little tiny marrow up there it's about the right time I think I pollinated it in the middle of July last year so we're not far off that so if that flower opens at the same time as a one of these your male flower then I can pollinate it and hopefully it should set and we should get a giant marrow again so that's that one I'll just show you the other one that's the other one they just grow bananas they grow stupidly quickly. Right, I'll just uh, start off at this end. Done a bit of weeding now, so my leeks are looking a bit 
a bit tidier. They've all taken well now since I transplanted them, so they should be right by about September or October time. Musselboro these are, just your bog standard leeks. I've tried all sorts of different ones, but just stick to what you know. That's what I find. Second lot of peas. Climbing. Getting about two foot tall now. So hopefully get those in before September because we suffer with mildew up here. So I've got to do them quite early. These are my onions that were drying out. I've just put the cloche on them. They're up, all the tops are shriveled up now. So they should store okay. Red onions still growing, stupidly enough. They're the ones that usually bolt. But they haven't bolted at all. I've got well, I've one bolter. And they're not a bad size. They're not giants, but I don't care. They're still growing. And no, no bolters, which is, like I said, quite strange. It's the opposite way around to what you usually get. Red ones usually bolt. And uh, shallots. All drying out now again. I've been eating loads of these. Eating plenty of those. This is where I dug the shallots up from. And I'm now planting some turnips. Got about four rows of turnips. I'll, I'll thin those out when they get a bit bigger. But that'll give me something to eat with my carrots in autumn time, hopefully. Spring onions, been taking loads of these now. They're all ready to take again. In fact, I'll pull one up. They're getting a bit, not that they can get too big. I should get the come equipped, really, shouldn't I? Like I say, I grow them in clumps. So then you just pull a plump out. I can do it one handed. Yeah, they're a fair size, they're as big as leeks now, look. Look, there you go, three spring onions. Don't have to disturb the rest of the row because I've just pulled a clump out, so uh, good stuff. It's the way I grow them now, by transplanting them. Sounds a bit daft, but if I just grow them direct, sow them, I never seem to get any results, but just sowing them in modules and then transplanting them later, get far better results. Right, that's those. Parsnips, top's looking fantastic. What's underneath, who knows? We'll find out Christmas time, probably with those. Kale, been eating tons of kale. Still got loads under the cover as well to keep the butterflies off, but like I said, it doesn't seem to get affected. Like cabbages do. Right, oh, there's something in there, Christ. A little wren's caught in there. How's that wren got in there? I'll have to, just hang on a minute, I'll just go and uh, release the wren. Right, that's the wren released. They just find their way into the tiniest little crack in your stuff, but can't get out. Anyway, I'm up here every day so they're not going to be in for a lot more than about 12 hours. Right, uh, show potatoes here in bags, believe it or not, you can't see the bags. They'll be dug up in about, about three weeks or so. They're outgrowing my rhubarb now. I'll just have a quick nip into my, my carrot tardis and my parsnip, my show growing bit. I don't think we've been in here for about three months. Oh, Let's show you how stuff's going. That's my carrot. It's starting to perk up a bit now. Trouble is I'm behind this tree and it gets the shade from about three o'clock so it's not getting maximum sunlight. But the parsnips are looking absolutely, well the tops anyway. Look at the state of them, about four feet tall. And that's the base. So if they're as good below as they are on top, we should have some good, uh, good roots for the shows but you just never know until you pull them. You never know, they might be forked, they might have canker, they might be tiny. Right, we'll just nip into the other bit and I'll show you that now. Right, potatoes still absolutely flying along now. You can see some gaps now because I've been taking a few pots. They're the first early, so they've been, they've been alright so far. They should be good now because we had a good rain the other night. Should have put some water in them. Make them swell up. They're that big now, they're sheltering my garlic. And the garlic, well the tops again, absolutely massive. But I've not even had a root about to see how big the bulbs are yet, so we won't know. I'll just keep them growing until they start going yellow and, and topple over, really. Shallots. These are the ones from seed. Oh, hang on, let's get down. Try and show you what sort of state they're up to. Starting to bulb up a little bit now. But I've got about 150 of those growing, so there's plenty of those. Plenty of time for those to bulk up. Second lot of lettuce. Now starting to be about ready, some of it. Finished all my icebergs, the first lot, some of the costs have bolted. 
but if you ever go, if you ever want to grow just one lettuce, try this variety. It's called Multi Green Three. It's absolutely wonderful. Look at that, it's huge. That's probably about 18 inches across, and it's still crispy. Doesn't get tough. Doesn't get mildew. Doesn't rot. It's just a wonderful thing, and it doesn't bolt, so it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But uh, I've got some uh, newer ones coming. Some more coarse, and there's some more rows of seedlings just perked up there. I've just sowed another one, so I'll get another crop in about six or eight weeks. Peas, onto the peas. Best crop of peas I've ever grown, I think. I've never seen as many peas. It's just solid peas. Just ready to pick now. I think, maybe, yeah, I'll just show you. Oh, there might be some around this side. But this side's the same as well, look. It's just ridiculous, the amount of peas. I mean, there must be, God, no, I'm not going to count it, but £20 of peas. Right, we'll just have a seat with the light. I'm try and pod a pea with one hand and hold it and film it. Yeah, about right for me, maybe a tiny bit small, but how many have we got in that pod? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'll do for me, I'll just eat them. Mm, great stuff. Right, so that's the peas. Broccoli's just started to flower, purple sprouting stuff. So I'll have to keep picking bits of that off. Oh, them peas are fantastic. Cabbages, savoys. Just starting to heart up a little bit. Got a few of these greyhounds. They are hearting up now. If you can just about see if you can see through the net. They're like pointed summer ones. Quite quick. So they should be ready to take in a week or so I'd say. Right, that's about it I think outside. I'll just have a quick uh, look in the polytunnel and I'll show you what's going on in there. Right, finally into the polytunnel. The onion zone really. Get off. Right. These are my show ones, not the giant ones, and they're doing really well. No problems yet. Still not got any see any shoots growing in the wrong places, no thrips and no bolters, so uh, so far so good. French beans now. Starting to take some. Take me a few pickings. And they're just gonna continue up, all the way up. There's just hundreds of them. Look at them, they're like trusses of tomatoes, like Runner beans, you just get millions of them. Fantastic variety, Cobra. I'd urge anyone to give those a go. I think I might have made a bit of a, an error putting this squash in because it's just swamping everything. So I'm going to try to train it sort of horizontally across to keep it out of the way of everything because it's just, I don't know, it's just taken off. It's even swamping me. My cucumbers having to really rush in, like get a bit of a sprint on to get above it. And the courgette, I've never seen anything outgrow these courgettes, but the squash has full of courgettes already. I'll have to pick those if I can get to them. Oh dear, more big onions. Oh no, these are the big ones, sorry, in pots, getting big, still growing okay. Oh, no room in here anymore. Show carrots doing fantastically well, but again, you never know until you pull them up. Tops look brilliant, looking healthy. Same thing with the uh, long carrots, everything looking fine. But you don't know until you pull them up. So I'll just show you my final big onion again to finish it off. So I've just started off some extra early purple sprouting, which is going to go outside maybe in about three weeks. And that's the stuff that will be ready sort of March, February, March time next year. I think that's called Rudolph, it's an extra early one, it can be ready round about Christmas, it's stuff I grew this year that was really good, so I'm gonna, gonna do it again. Right, finally, onto uh, the onion, the big one, and it's still growing quite well. If you see it compared to a tin of pot, it's a beast. Still bulbing up slowly, it's about 21 inches now, which is probably about four and a half pound probably six pound with the leaves but it's still poking leaves out as well which is a good sign so if it can get keep that growing for another two months 
who knows how big it'll get right that's it I think just about again another two week roundup just time's flying this year so that's about it folks I think see you later